Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're still on the theme of Power Query, but we're going to address the issue where we have uh, a number of files that we wish to combine to create one data set that we're able to use in our Excel file uh, and then be able to obviously visualize from there on. Uh, the great benefit of this, if you're watching this video and you're either requiring this in Excel or maybe something like Power BI, uh, this, this uh, exact solution is transferable across both. So first thing we can see on the screen at the moment is we've got our file explorer open and we can see that within this folder of snapshots, we have three files. So in this scenario, maybe the end of every month, this snapshot is taken and it's obviously capturing data. Uh, for us, we'll see the data as soon as we pull it into uh, Power Query, but it's a real simple 10, row, 10 or 12 rows per file uh, containing the date at which it was um, the snapshot was captured and also a value per each individual. So we'll treat this as maybe sales data. So we'll, without further ado, we'll just jump straight into it. So any of you familiar with Power BI may be aware of a, a not to say a quicker way of doing this, but I guess it is quicker, but maybe an out of the box way of doing this in which you can go to get data, go to uh, from file, and then go down to maybe from folder. Um, I am not gonna go for that solution just because when Power BI does this for you, it creates a number of unnecessary steps. So we're gonna be using obviously a lot of manual, well not a lot of, but we're gonna do a couple of manual formulas, but you'll just see, how straightforward and simple it is to achieve. So if you've done this process before that I'm showing on the screen, uh, yeah, you have something to compare to. If you haven't done that process before, by all means have a play around with it, but I think the solution that I'm gonna show you makes it a lot more streamlined and simple to follow as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select Go Data and we're gonna just go straight to Launch Power Query Editor. And once Power Query has loaded itself, obviously at the moment we've got no data in here, so it looks quite bland. All I'm gonna do is right click in the queries uh, pane over the side here, go to new query, and then I'm gonna go down to other sources and go blank query. So in here, we are now gonna find or locate our file uh, location or folder location, should I say more specifically. So fairly easy one to remember. All you need to do is go equal folder, and then you can see the next one is folder.files. And I'm going to open my brackets. And just for uh, laziness, I've got the link I require just to the side over here on another screen. You can see at the moment it's obviously given an error because nothing has been provided. But if I just now paste that in there, and obviously, of course, you can then change this um, um, this file path uh, as, as required. Once I've entered that, I'm just going to hit enter. And you can see we're now seeing our file. And here we can see we've got that file again, um, that folder open again. So we can see our three files in here and you can see they map exactly, well not map, but you can see them exactly the same in here. So this also gives you some added flexibility should you need to incorporate uh, such information into your reports. Uh, we'll leave this for now, but obviously that's another one that you can play around with. So the next thing we need to do is how can we combine these three files um, in this scenario uh, into one data set. And it's important to mention here as well that the solution we're now gonna enter, when more files are added to this folder, so maybe at the end of this month or next month, uh, there will now be four files rather than three. This solution will include that additional file uh, to make sure that our data set will continue to grow as time goes on. So what we need to do over here is go to our apply steps. I'm gonna right click and go inset step after. And you can see at the moment, the step is just defaulted. So we've got our source at the moment, obviously what's gonna go get the, the files in that folder. And then custom is currently just referring to exactly the same um, step. What I'm going to do though, is if we just remove source for the time being, I'm gonna enter the formula uh, binary dot combine. Oh, and it's gone for me. So just go type it in, there you go, binary dot combine. And sometimes uh, Power Query will do this. You can see it's doubly entered the binary. So I'm just going to make sure that I delete that one off before it gets uh, confused later on. Open brackets. And simply all we need to do now is refer to the previous step. So for us, it's called source. Uh, but if you were, I don't know, for whatever reason, your step, your first step or the step you're referring to was called something else, then obviously it would be referring to that step instead. So I've just typed source and you can see it's popped up with a suggestion. So I'm just gonna hit tab so it's selected. And then the last thing I need to do is do a square bracket and type the word content. And you can see it's now put a, a closing square bracket and also a closing curve bracket for the function of combine. And 
in most simplest terms, what this is doing, it's just saying combine all of the sources content is, is one way you could put it. There might not be the most technical answer, but it simply put, that's what it's doing. If we now hit enter, you can see how it's uh, done exactly as required. It's gone to all of those files and combined all the information together. So you can see we've got obviously the, uh, the headers for each file of obviously being included in here. And likewise, for each file, you can see we've got the November snapshot, the December snapshot, and then lastly, the most recent uh, January snapshot and how we've got, uh, like I say, the first two columns, or first three columns of ID, name, and region are all gonna be the same. And then each month's gonna obviously have its unique file date, but also your unique figures here as well. So we just need to do a couple of steps to tidy up our data. So the first thing I'm gonna do is promote the first row of the data set to headers. Uh, so simply under the, the home tab we've got selected here, halfway across you can see first use first row as headers. So if we select that, you can see that uh, in scenario has now been fixed. The next thing we want, want to, well, we will want to address is we don't want these column headings appearing uh, in every, you know, throughout our data set. We literally just want um, obviously one set of headings and then obviously our dates. So all I'm gonna do in the file date, but again, you could apply this anywhere suitable, is I'm simply gonna go into the drop down and I'm just gonna deselect file date and go okay. And you can see that's now created this filtered row step for me. And simply, if we now look at it, it says, obviously, change type one, which is our, our previous step. Uh, each file date is not equal to file date. So any of you not familiar, if we wanted it to be equal to file date, you would see this symbol, whereas the uh, less than, greater than symbols combined meet, uh, equate to does not equal. So we can see that's worked for us as well. And yeah, we then have our data set that we require. So two last things I'll just uh, observe as having said that, is this file date at the moment is being treated as text. I don't want that, I want it to be recognized as a date. So I'm just gonna select the ABC we currently have in the top left for that field. And I'm just gonna navigate down and select date. And you can see it's now converted that to a date for me. And likewise for sales. So we're just gonna just quickly try and see if we can convert this to a, uh, a whole number. Um, you might want to do decimal uh, working with uh, sales amounts, uh, but I'm just gonna go for a whole number at this time. And yep, you can see it has converted that for us as well. So let's just check out other ones. Yeah, I'm happy. Employee ID is text, name is text, region is text. Sales is a whole number, uh, but alternatively, obviously, like I said, you could make that a decimal if you did want decimal places in your values. And our last file date we can see has been stored as a date as well. So, and that, yeah, and probably it's worth noticing, you can see the steps have been applied as required, and we can now see the actual formula should we require that. So obviously, rather than do this manual, you could, if you could remember it, uh, you could obviously type this in um, straight away uh, rather than having to do it manually. Uh, last thing to do is going to change this to uh, change rename. So let's call this something on the lines of uh, snapshot data uh, for, for lack of uh, better terms. So you can see it's now obviously renamed in the query over here. So last thing I'm going to do is go close and load. And obviously it will now refresh and pull through that data for us. And there we go. We have now got our data com uh, all combined into one table for us here called snapshot data. Uh, it's, we've got sheet one here as well. Mm, not going to use that. Uh, so I just deleted that off. So the last thing, obviously, the benefit of doing this is we want to be able to now present this data. So we could simply go into here and let's say let's put in a pivot table. So let's go insert uh, pivot table uh, from table or range. And we can select it from here, snapshot data. So I might have done that a bit quick. If you navigate to the top left of your table, you can see your black arrow will um, change. So it goes into a diagonal. As soon as it does that, if you select, it will identify that you've uh, selected a table. Alternatively, if you knew the table name, you can just type that in here and it will do the same for you. And we can just validate. So where is it gonna put our pivot table? Okay, location snapshot data, which is our, our tab name. And it's gonna go into I1. So yeah, obviously the selection we made here. Let's just do okay. And now what we can do is obviously the benefits of having this all into one data is we can now uh, separate our file dates. So let's just, uh, I don't want quarters and years. I just want to have the date. And let's say we want to do this by region and then we'll bring in our sales amount. 
and we can see we've now got it there. So we can now see the, all the benefits of now bringing this all into one file is we've now got our sales by month and obviously the total that each region has done. And alternatively, you could obviously demonstrate this via a person's name as well. Uh, and as I mentioned halfway through there, the real benefit of obviously doing this solution is as new files or snapshots are added to that folder, direct, um, folder destination, then obviously every time we refresh our data set, um, and simply all we need to do for that is we right click our data set or our table and we can go down to refresh. It will pull through the latest data uh, so we're able to report on it as well. Uh, again, the real benefit of this is it just keeps all those um, separate snapshots or those snapshots, snapshots separate. This is what I'm trying to say. Uh, rather than like, you know, having to maintain uh, manually in one master file. So it's a real benefit of using that way. So I hope you enjoyed that video and it gave you a solution if you're looking for this problem or it's given you some ideas on how you could improve one of your existing reports. If you liked the video, uh, please do give the video a like. It's not only greatly appreciated by me, but it does help that all important YouTube algorithm. And if it's your first time checking out the channel or you've watched our videos before, could I please ask you to consider subscribing to the channel? Uh, obviously. It will not only help me, but again, it will notify you once you hit that bell notification button of all of our future videos as and when they come out. So once again, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in your next video.